Okay, I'm back on the Zenith XBV443. I spoke to the customer and they do want a VCR service. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a regular tape path cleaning, clean the cylinder, clean the heads, clean the lower drum assembly, clean the audio control erase head, which I should point out to everyone where they are. So right over here, we have the full erase head. This erases the full tape path in record. You have the entrance tape guide and the entrance angle guide. This is the cylinder assembly. On the top is the rotating cylinder with the rotating heads. One head, two heads. One more head, that's the hi-fi audio head. One head, two heads, and another hi-fi audio head. And if you notice, they are spaced 180 degrees apart from each other. So the tape wrap consists of about 200 degrees. So there's always a head in contact with the video. And it does this magical switching thing that when this one head gets to this point, it switches back to this head over here, reads the next track, and then switches back to the head that's coming around over here. So we have the exit tape guide roller and the exit angle guide. This is the back tension arm assembly. There's a little felt pad wrapped around the supply reel. And as this plays, it automatically adjusts the tension depending upon how the spring right here is set. Now over here, we have the audio control erase head. Kind of hard to see because I'm pointing the camera straight down, but the black portion, eh, you might be able to see it. Let me see if I can tip it up for you. Okay, the black portion right here is the audio erase head. So it erases just the top of the tape where the audio track is recorded. Down here is the control head that records a pulse, the vertical pulse onto the tape to adjust the tracking. And up on top, you can barely see it right there, that is the audio playback record head. Now the reason they have an audio erase head is because when you're in the record mode, it actually records audio as much as the cylinder can handle. It actually records up into the audio portion. And if you don't pre-erase that audio, you can hear this high frequency repetitive sync sound coming out in the audio circuit if the head's not perfectly adjusted. So they just go ahead and erase the top track right there and then re-record the audio, the linear audio, not to be confused with the hi-fi audio, which is what this head right there records. Next, we have just another tape guide just to roll it around right here. We have the pinch roller and capstan shaft. This is the capstan shaft. This is the pinch roller. And then they just wanna go ahead and add a little bit more tension right here. So when this is in playback, it pulls that over here to get a little bit more surface area on the pinch roller just to keep the tape from crinkling a little bit if the pinch roller becomes aged. Down here we have the drive assembly, which depending upon which direction the capstan is going to run, it swings over and engages whichever real table needs to be engaged. Now there's some fancy footwork going on down here. There's actually a clutch. So in playback, it has limited slip with a limited amount of torque because you don't wanna pull the tape past the pinch roller and the capstan right here. In fast forward and rewind, you want maximum torque. So it's directly coupled in fast forward and rewind. Okay, a little bit of explanation on the VCR tape transport. Let's go ahead and get into cleaning. So I do have my Pyrex dish with acetone. I've already cleaned it out. I put just a small amount in it, maybe a quarter ounce, and then wiped it out with a paper towel inside and out. I do not double dip in this. It's a single dip only. That way it ensures fresh acetone all the time. And I'm going to hear it. You can't clean this with acetone. It'll destroy it. Well, I've been doing this since 1982. That's 40 years to you and me as the time of this recording, at least. And I've never had an issue with using cotton swabs and acetone. It'll eat the enamel off the video head wires. Yes, they are very, very fine copper wire with an enamel coating. No, it will not eat the enamel. I've done tests where I've soaked the enamel clad wire in acetone for weeks at a time and it did not weaken the enamel whatsoever. So I'm still basically on my first dip right here. I'm gonna rotate the cotton swab and go to my second dip. And I just want to clean everything that makes contact with the tape. So if the tape touches it, I want to wipe it off. 
Okay, first cotton swab is done. I'm gonna go to my second one. Now these are actual branded Q-tip cotton swabs. They're not generics or anything like that. So I'm cleaning everything that touches the tape and then it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but I'm just gonna scrub the plastic roller right here while I'm moving the cotton swab up and down. You can see my left finger rotating it slightly and my right hand is just moving the cotton swab up and down in a vertical fashion just to make sure I didn't leave any prints or oily residue behind. I'm just gonna wipe it a few times, kind of diagonally so it rolls as it goes. Now for the tricky part. I'm gonna clean the upper and lower cylinder with a cotton swab. And they say you can't do it. I'm not contacting the heads right now. I'm only cleaning the cylinder portion. So when the head comes around, it's kind of hard to see but I'm actually lifting up very slightly to not contact the heads yet. I will be contacting them, just not yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a brush now that I've completely wiped off the whole cylinder. Once again, I'm not down to the head level. And then you can see the amount of crud that came off of the cylinder. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the heads, but I'm only gonna use just this portion right here not the big fuzzy that can get caught up in the head, just this little area right there. And I'm cleaning in a horizontal motion only. The heads are quite fragile. And if you do clean in a vertical motion, you probably will damage them. I'm gonna go ahead and go around a couple times. The heads are beveled so they shouldn't catch the cotton swab. Change ends on the cotton swab. Next I'm going to clean the lower cylinder. And notice that I've got the heads spaced away from where I'm cleaning just in case I slip. Once again, anywhere the tape touches, I'm gonna go ahead and clean. Several commenters have asked, go ahead and remove that auto head cleaner. And yes, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And it's different for each model. This one's got a tab right here. So I'm just gonna unlock the tab and rotate it slightly. And then it'll actually pull up and out. I was questioning leaving this one, but I did a test on it where you just squeeze it and release it. If it pops back to shape instantly, it's good. If it collapses, it's bad. And I'm gonna say it's bad. Next, another brand new cotton swab. And I'm gonna clean the audio control erase head. The exit roller. This ensures the tape is flat against the audio head if there's any inconsistencies, especially over here where the pinch roller is. Just in case the tape touches that, we'll give it a cleaning as well. Another new end of the cotton swab, and I'm gonna scrub the capstan shaft vertically because it's too hard to scrub it rotationally. And now for the pinch roller, this is gonna require a bit more pressure. This pinch roller is in very good shape with very low hours. This whole VCR has very low hours on it. And you can see how much came off right there. Another new cotton swab. Usually I'll use probably two or three complete cotton swabs with different ends. So six scrubs total on the pinch roller. I just wanna make sure I get every like square millimeter of this thing cleaned off. Okay, all done. So I've used six cotton swabs total. I'm very happy with the results. It looks like mint condition now. Next I have just a bit of white lithium grease and I'm just going to dab this. where the tape guides run. Try to get some on the bottom as well.
taking care not to touch anything in the tape path itself. I'm going to get just a little bit more right over here on this side. And I think I'm going to call that good. Next, we'll pop a tape into it and make sure it still works. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pop a tape into it. This is a tape I made back when I went to Idaho in like 1985 or 86, somewhere there. I'm not quite sure. What I'm hoping on this tape is the same scenes that I showed. There's a hi-fi, so the hi-fi heads are working. Those are the SP two-hour heads. So I'm hoping that the same scenes that I just recorded on my trip, there it is right there. That's the sign, East Hope. I know I showed that when I videoed it back in July of 2022. So I've got to pull out my new video and compare it to my old video and see if it is exactly the same or if there's anything different. I'm very curious to see because I parked in that same spot. If you look at my vacation videos, you can see it there. I don't think that signal was there. I don't think that signal was there. Anyhow, a VCR service basics. There it is. How to clean your VCR. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was fast. Probably going to be like 10 or 12 minutes like always. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. So I'm thinking this box is the same exact box that was here so many years ago when I did this video of the train coming around that bend right there. Now I think the box behind it is new, but I'm pretty sure that that signal right there is in one of my videos from like 1985 or something. I'm gonna have to review the video now and see what's there. I know what's changed. But I think I got a picture of that sign right there, Clark Fork and Sandpoint. And I'm pretty sure I've got video of the train coming around this once again from the 80s. I'll have to get my VHS tape out and find out. All right, on to bigger and better things. Got to go through Sandpoint. I'm betting that box is exactly the same. I don't think it's ever changed. I think that sign right there, I think I've got a close-up of it in the video. I'll have to look and see. So it actually records up into the audio port. So in playback, it has limited slip with a... All right, here we go. Capture device running. Oh, helps if I plug a USB in, right? Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, USB plugged in. And it does say capture device recording.